Welcome back, ladies and gents, to the Indie Spotlight, where I take you on an adventure to find out if this game is something worth buying or is destined for that backlog of games you always tell yourself you'll get to one day. Today, we are jumping into The Sovereign Syndicate, a Victorian steampunk RPG with tarot cards instead of dice. This indie game released January 15th by the team Crimson Herring Studios. I'm intrigued by the mysteries of this role-playing game and how my choices will change my experience. My fate is based on tarot cards and the steampunk world. There are three characters, and each with their own narrative. If you end up picking up your own copy, let me know how your experience goes in the comments below. Stay a moment after this video to learn more about Ants Online and the chilly winter sales we have going on right now. And remember, we're also live on Twitch. Right now, probably. Most definitely. Alright, let's start off chapter 1. You have three characters, but you can only play at the beginning Atticus Daily. In chapter 1, we have to follow him as he explores the seedy underbelly of London's East Docklands in search of his mother, a reason for living, and his next fix. So as a role-playing game, I like how we have a few characters and they have background stories when we start off. And I can pick how I want to play him. So Atticus can be like a brute. Uh, he can be spry. He can have a lot of wit, clever, a clever minotaur. And then we have self-discipline, which is what I'm going to go with. So... Uh, my Atticus Daily might be different than your Atticus Daily, but he's going to grow up in a crowded orphanage. He knows illusionary magic to disguise himself as a human, and he moderates his urges and keeps a cool head. I'm really attracted to the fact that this game uses tarot cards instead of dice, and I, I enjoy games, you know, like maybe like Baldur's Gate or uh, Divinity, where my choices are all changed by the fact that whatever it is I roll or my attributes or, you know, do I have inspiration, all that jazz. Like this is interesting because the fact that we're using tarot cards. Everything in this is, you must read. I love the fact that we're starting off with Oscar Wilde. I'm going to read these little excerpts to you guys, but I'm not going to read every single dialogue as we play. My throat will die if I try to do that. And it is winter time, friends. Okay, so <clears throat> let me put on my narrative voice. A dark shape looms around you, against the guttering lampshade. The black shadowed form hovers unsteadily, like a cutout in a magic lantern. You can't be sure whether it's real, living thing, or another grim manifestation. From your week-long bender, which at first blush you appear to have survived, or is the face, or is it the face of death, come to claim you? In any case, the specter seems to be in no hurry to move along. Painful memories prick your gin-addled brain. Now you recall why you were here. You chose this alleyway in London's East End to drown the last of your days in drink. Well, if this apparition isn't the angel of death, then even at suicide, you have failed. Wow, that's deep. You're starting off real deep. I wake up to an old crone. Just uh, talking to me in my head. <laughs> Atticus, he's coming, she says. I'm telling her to get out of my head. So the dialogue is so interesting because depending on what your tarot cards draw, you can respond to each character differently. So my gameplay is going to be different than your gameplay. The Mass Stranger. Atticus Daily? My wit. Nothing but a dark silhouette for a face. No, it's a mask. So what I see, I like that. I like how my wit is a part of this conversation. And then my self-reflection comes in. His voice is cold and mechanical, like the hinge of a heavy iron door, concealing his identity, no doubt. My self-discipline? So you can see with these tarot cards, like, what is it do I need to pull? <laughs> I was going to say roll, but pull in order to win. So uh, zero required to succeed. Of course I have success. My two of cups. Atticus Daly, self-discipline. Who are you? <laughs> Spryness, instead of response, he pr proffers me a tin stipled flask. Do I drink it? My mother just died. I seem to be like at my wit's end, you know? I'm going to take it eagerly. I've been hoping for the hair of the dog, but alas, it's only the chloric bite of London tap water. So plus 10 hope. I like this because... If I were to respond to a character negatively, I would lose hope. And then in that, I would lo lose optimism. And then with that, I would just sound like a sad, angry minotaur. So the way I'm responding to each character changes the way that I, you know, my temperament. It like changes the way I talk to people. 
I stow the flask. The stranger leans back into the dim light of the gas lamps. I can finally see his features in full. Self-reflection. My inner monologue says. He wears a brass button traveling waistcoat, complete with a scarlet hood and a mask of ornate gold panels. It glitters in the gaslight, delicately crafted. I meant to say ornate, okay, gee. And then <laughs> my wit or my observation, finery like I've never seen. On your feet now, you sorry. Okay, no, we're not doing we're not doing voices. So self discipline. I'm very self disciplined. That's that was the attribute I picked at the beginning. Dizzy from the head rush. It's hard to keep my balance. Who are you? I ask. A friend in need of your services, he says. An inner monologue says, a friend but a man of a station, so deep in the Docklands spells trouble. My wit, misery acquaints a man with strange bedfellows. I need a moment to get my bearings, I say. Fair enough, but I'll be watching. <laughs> okay. Spryness, the stranger pulls back his waistcoat, showing off a gilded flintlock pistol. My animal instinct. So one of my attributes as a minotaur is I have animal instincts. Um, so I could actually start putting uh, tarot rolls or tarot poles into that if I wanted. But um, I'm going to definitely lean into what I originally started off with, which is uh, self-discipline. So many outstanding depths and foregone second chances. It, it is all catching up to me. Wary or worse, no matter. Let it be tonight then. He can try all the others, but none have yet succeeded. All right, so like I said, I kind of sounded a little sad there. It made me sound a little weary. And uh, because of that, I lost five hope. I want to be as hopeful as I can. I want to be happy. <laughs> um, okay, my inner monologue chrome. So I have like a third voice in my head, I suppose. Come now, surely things aren't so dire. She tells me up here in the journal area to hold fast my sanity. Self-discipline. It's up to me, seeing every impulse to an outcome, snuffing out the pleasures of life, should I so desire. What I need is peace and quiet, a place to clear my mind. So she immediately tells me to go behind this padlock door. So if I wanted, I could walk around and explore this town. But I'm going straight for this padlock door, baby. Let's, uh... So animal instinct, let's break the damn thing. Spryness, hands are a bit shaky, but let's have a go. Let's try our animal instinct. So I need a seven to succeed. Minor tarot cards. To make a skill check, you will draw a card from one of the four minor arcana decks. Each deck contains cards numbered from 1 to 14. They also contain the world, which will always succeed a skill check, and the fool, which will always fail, and then reshuffle the deck. Is a fool a critical one? Oh, and the world, a nat 20? Would you look at that? I've got the eight of swords making me successful. Away from the stranger is enough for me. So before I go in there, I should grab my cane sword. Pick that up. Take the cane with you. I wonder if it makes me seem more hostile. I mean, I am a minotaur. I'm giant. Ooh, what's the newspaper say? The Illustrated London News, this week's edition. A fleet-footed journalist takes to the East End, underground and undercover. The hard-boiled scoop on the courtesan killer. Who's really behind the murders? And what is Scotland Yard still hiding from the public? Read on for the gory details. The story will boil your blood. Ponder the news. I've had enough of this. I love how I can basically pick what I want. There's nothing in my inventory yet. And, uh, nice. I like this. Okay. A little bit of a journal. Tell me what I need to do. But let's go straight into the warehouse. You know, if you're like, Lily, I really want to see more. Well, hey, you can try it out yourself. <laughs> All right. Story time. The passage is lined with stone walls, damp from the evening fog and the underground steam boiler used to heat the tenements above. 
Barrels lined the walls and seemed to occupy every available space in this underground storeroom. Cane rats scurry and squeak in the corners, kneading at their nests. The air is stagnant, full of dust and mold. A ways off, there's the sound of a pump house at work, no doubt channeling sewage into the Thames. There's a dim light ahead. Perhaps you can find help, or at least a way out of the stranger's grasp. The old crone is uh, warning me, telling me to watch out, and I'm like, hey, I can do what I need to. Let's see, can we interact? This guy looks like he's a sleeping guy. Leave him alone. Yeah, I'm always interested in what different stories I can get out of this. So we're doing a quick run of this, just like intro. To see if I can get something different than my last gameplay. I failed. All right. Trousers with... <laughs> okay, I failed, but I was able to open it, apparently. Self-reflection. The head torch runs on a coppery coil battery. There's boots and breeches, and the waist coast has enough pockets to carry a dining set to be sure. It's a sang hong sand hog uniform. We're gonna try it on. I don't know if it'll fit. Yeah. I could have ripped it. I didn't rip it though. Maybe I'll give it to somebody. Who knows? There's a manhole cover. What's in there? I but the cover is bull heavy. Let me try to lift it. I failed again. I need a, a right tool, then I can slide it. That's me being smart. I'm a smart minotaur. But we'll keep exploring. Let's see if we get different things. Oh. See if we can hide. My inner voices are at odds. When you choose one voice over another, this changes the balance of your humors. Over time, these voices become stronger. So you're kind of cultivating and creating your character at the beginning of this, aren't you? It seems like. There is a pool of shadow at the back of this hallway. Um. Apparently I can't hide. So we're gonna we're gonna talk to him. Here he comes. His face is filthy, mud streaked and unshaven, and his head torch is near as bright as daylight down here. He smells worse than the sewer walls. Must be a bilge man. A poop man? <laughs> um, the bilge man. Oi, I'm probably saying this wrong. The bilge man? The bilge man. Oi, what a bovine doing down this way. You better scram before I call the hoons. You're trespassing. I'm going to use my animal instinct. I'm going to growl at him. I'm running from a bounty hunter. A mortally unpleasant fellow. If you catch my meaning, I say. Humph. Fear of life loss. A common excuse. For my sake, I wish it were otherwise. It would explain your disposition in a tattered waistcoat. What's the idea of having such finery? Only to let it run to rags. <laughs> String of bad luck is all. I, I've been there. Anyway, I'm too busy to riddle with queer folk, even if they're trespassing. Not among your duties, eh? Not a chance. Now here's my advice. If you really hear on the run, someone left an old uniform in the coffer upstairs next to the bloke supposed to be got in the entrance. Come with a head torch, and the one thing that you need down here is light. May might make for a clever disguise. Not a bad idea. Should I? Is he telling me to go back and try it on? I but you know what's out of pattern? I'm never so cheeky with a fellow I haven't met, but there's something flashed about you. Any road, better get back to work. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I, I don't, I doubt I can put it on. I will try. I have a feeling that if you started this with another character, they would be the ones I can wear, but I doubt it. Here, let's try. Force it. <gasps> oh, we got a success. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay, okay. Just gotta force it. We 
get it. Did it work? This could be a sign of layoff. I may be so the source of many troubles. Okay. I'm going to keep drinking for a little bit. It's so crazy how, like, my inner monologue is fighting with each other. Okay, so apparently now I'm supposed to be here. I am one... I am one with the... I have the Sandhog uniform on. Alright, let's see where we go next. So now if I run into someone, maybe they'll be like, Hey, hey, let's be buddies. Imagine if that failed, though. Like, I'd have ripped stuff. Okay, what's the streamer's drink? Let's see what's inside here. There's tin inside. I'm sure of it, I say. Let's try to pick the lock. I failed. I'm real sad about that. All right, and then... Can we break it open? Oh! What's inside? My hammer fist thud pitifully against the deadbolt. But at last, I've asserted myself. Always good to get the blood pumping. And it is locked. Unfortunately. Here's a furnace automation. Oh, a little robot. <laughs> Speak up. Who disrupts the air? Sandhog business. Please clear the way. Sandhog business, please. I just... I just said that. <laughs> Believe me, I want to hold you back. It's nice to know another workman. Then you must know of the operations down here. Of course, I know what's going on. But since you are so slapdash to bring it up, I need to make sure you haven't been preaching. Peaching. I just like the way that they'll write, like the writing. But, but overall, it's tarot cards. It's the tarot cards and their art that I'm like really into. So the high priestess. You know, like, look at all of these other cards that I haven't even touched. What do they do? The letters Hira are blazed on the chest place. What does that mean? What does Hira mean? It means heat energy regulation automation, the latest iteration. <laughs> oh, can you hear? Can you imagine that in a cute little voice? Um, you can ask about the fire. I delayed my work I was made for it, and this boiler provides heat for the Sherlock tenements upstairs. As a sandhog yourself, you must know the reward of providing a service for the masses. Aha, uh -huh, you must notice these barrels, they're really quite capital. The hounds are distilling their own gin from the heat of my boiler, and somehow the Sherlock tenements upstairs haven't caught on. Over there, there's a grate that leads to the sewers. Bearing that, no, nowhere else to go but the way you came. Okay. I could have asked for more alcohol, but I, um, I skipped it. Edging through the grate, you're greeted by the droning sound of rushing water and a smell that's near unbearable, hanging in the air so thick you can almost taste it. Hooves are clumsy in the dark as you stumble along the passageway, the sound of water flow and machinery echoing off the bricks from all directions. A meshing of gears that's familiar but unsettling. Following the light, you come into a torch-lit chamber, but it seems you're not alone. Notes of troubled voices peek over the noise, an air of ignignus and irritation, but also of fear and desperation. Something's not right here. You've stumbled on an argument, no doubt, but worse than that is a deep foreboding. Something else shares these sewers. A deeper evil crawling through the bowels of London. Indignance. Sorry. Indignance didn't come out properly. Okay. Let's see. A blocked passage. What's behind this? Welter bricks and rotting planks blocking the way through.
Oh, so I could have responded be like, oh, there's no way through, which would have been a negative. But instead I responded with, hey, I'll just go another direction. I'll find a different route. And it gave me hope. I want to try to be as positive as I can. Can we do anything here? Nope, but keep going. But yeah, this, uh, this game looked really appealing. It's the first of its kind from... Crimson Herring Studios, and uh, I wanted to give it a chance. I thought it'd be really fun. And I, as a person who loves games that are decided by dice, I thought it'd be really interesting to try a game that's decided by tarot cards. And the reasoning behind them. What does this do? Oh, let's eavesdrop. Let's have a listen. So down below, we see a man. You'll pad me pockets until I say die. He's hounding this poor girl for capital. Only a lad's man would stoop so low. And if so, then she must be cut purse. I'm sick of stealing, she says. And I'm sore of begging all the more. It's shameless. Pity. But the odds are in his favor. The poor girl's got strapping tape holding her boots together. Let's play it out. Intervene quickly. Self-discipline. Go down there and break it up. This hardly concerns me. Ah, uh, let's see what happens. Me and my straight razor are bonded in bloodshed. Ha, huh, speaking of bonded, I've got news of the scapegrace you're always with. Birdie, was it? Bertram, do you know where he is? How about you first tell me where in the sewers you two are keeping the cash? I'll cut you to ribbons for I split my riches <laughs> before I split my riches with you. My self-reflection. The girl has spirit, but it might mightn't be against the ladsman. Um, let's see. Do we interfere quickly or do we go down there and break it up? Let's intervene. Let's see what happens. A barrow teeters at the edge. It'll sure distract him if it doesn't smash him dead. A fine idea. It's ludicrous, but I like it. It's far too reckless. There must be a better way. Let's give in. We need seven to succeed. And we failed. So, <laughs> I didn't get to give in to the ludicrous idea. That's me throwing the barrel. And he dodges it. And it goes straight into the water. And now they're both looking at me. I'd fancy a toe to toe right about now. That's rich from a toe shadow crawler who won't even show his face. Poor is clerically taunting me. Should I stop stoop to his level? Spryness, keep yammering. Self discipline, let it go. It turns that I have respect for the blade, then I won't have to spill any blood with it. Well, run into a patrol man. Boy, Sandhog, what's your business here? He's full of piss and vinegar. I'm gonna be spry. I want to move on. I want to talk to the people down there. Well, that tall fellow holds weight with the hounds. I shouldn't like to interfere. Off limits. Besides, she's locked down for maintenance. If I were you, I'd head up street, side before the morning doves. I'm trying to get out of here. Let's see what's in here. Through the hall is a chorus of machinery, the torpid crank of some heavy clockwork. Archway is fit with a blast door that's been left open. A control room for the pump house, no doubt. All right, so we are in another room where we're exploring. And there is an engineer. Let's go see what he needs. He has a grizzled face and a world-weary slump in his shoulders. Yet there's still a spark in his eyes. I have to scare him? Okay. I have no choice. And I failed at it.
Wow. That guy did not like me one bit. Last time it was in here, um, I had a chance to drink with him, and I didn't drink with him. I think it's because I'm wearing the, the, the outfit. I shouldn't have put the outfit on. He would have given me more information. What's going on? Things are much different. I failed. I am failing left and right right now. I almost feel like the game's pushing me in a direction, but like, what if? What if I succeeded? Okay, let's go down here and talk to these people that are fighting with each other. In my last gameplay, I was able to push him in the water with the barrel. <laughs> so this time it's definitely different. Grab my gears and cogs before I go. Um... confrontational right now okay let's go self-discipline i'll wait for the right moment no need to flash this deal if i don't have to i'm a freaking minotaur keep your crooked tips you were supposed to shelter us pay us and protect us but i wager there's a future for, for me beyond london well lads man the only way you'll leave london is in bits and pieces floating down the thames she flashes her eyes at me, some kind of signal. Attack him. Do I attack? Or do I settle with words? Let's settle with words. Let's see what happens. What's the sand pig? In a rush to get your just desserts. Ooh, lay off the girl, otherwise I'll shatter your kneecaps and fix you for bath chair. And I succeeded. Ooh, mm, did I intimidate him? Well, as it happens, I have business to attend to. Now scuttle off before we take turns breaking one rib at a time. Jeez, that's all it took? He's out of here. See ya. That guy was rude. Thanks for the assistance. My name is Annika Johansson. She's good at throwing knives. We're trying to give her options. What? She's like, I can't be a cutthroat person anymore. I want to move on. And then she's looking for her brother, Bitram, or her friend, her really close friend. If you don't get to the bottom of it, you might regret it forever. That's my advice to her. You know what happens? I'm the one in charge of <laughs> finding him. Missing orphans. We just picked up a mission. So if I were able to turn the water off, I'd be able to... I'd be able to... I think he's on the other side of this door. Or in this water, but I can't get past there. We made it all the way around. Oh, a flask. Okay. Well, I'm going to stop drinking. I'm going to make the decision right now. We're going to stop drinking. There was no escape in the sewers, only more danger you narrowly dodge, but it's nothing so ghastly as what might become of you at the hands of the stranger. You hardly even seen a handheld firearm in the docklands. That means he's coming from afar to track you down, and he won't give up easily. What of this old crone mumbling in your mind? Will another gin slumber pa put a seal on her words? Or is she now more than a figment? Is she in step with your pulse and your heartbeat? So deeply rooted, you might never escape her rasping chattering. By the break of morning, you should have some answers. But until then, you stumble on the cobbles, half-woken, the hangover cr clawing your skull like a prisoner in bondage. Oh, we're back up here. Now we gotta go find the masked man. He's waiting with a cold stare. All done mucking about down there about time. How do you like the finery? It might have served you down there, but it's not permissible where we're going. <laughs> I'm just going to follow him. Where are you taking me?
Your headache rages with a fierce second wind, and every step is a hammer and nail in your psyche. The stranger's reckless pace only makes matters worse, his arm like a vice grip, dragging you down a maze of twisted alleyways until, at last, a string of paper lanterns appears. Boy, boy, you... Boo buoys? Buoys. Buoys in a sickening sea of night, the cherry glow of Red Lantern Lane. Within waves of jasmine and sandalwood incense, memory washes fear away. This might be the only place that could convince you to keep on living, even just for a night. The gas mantle above the door fills you with fondness, cleansing the rest of your mind-gouging hangover. You're... You've arrived at the Red Lotus Den, the only place you've ever felt at home. No need to be pulled along now. You go inside willingly. Happy now, he says. Body aches, persistent nausea. From a physical standpoint, I'm barely holding it together. Allow me to rephrase, have you ever been happy? I think my outfit is so funny. We probably stink. Let's take a bath. Take a bath. Gave me some hope. I mean, feeling fresh is good. Hey, a centaur. So basically, we go back and forth. And uh, we quarrel a little bit. And we make fun of each other a little bit. And I start with my animal instinct, which causes the bouncer and me to really go at it. But Bixby does show up at the end. Out trots Mr. Browncoat, surely come to see what this fuss is about. He wears a long-faced countenance, a gold pocket watch, and a lavender-tinted pince-nez on his aquiline nose. Self-discipline. Despite his careful preening, the turbulence of life lived in the margin shows on his face. <laughs> a spryness? I'm going to be a little spry. He says, hello, hello, what do we have here? I've never even started my rounds and already there's a scuffle going on in the foyer. Sorry there, Bixby, but the bouncer was just saying how minotaurs are no longer welcome in your fine establishment. And why not? A minotaur is welcome here like any other customer. Oh, yes, I'm so, <laughs> you know, like, so he, he gets him in trouble. I got, I got the bouncer in trouble a little bit. I'm going to go change my clothes. So he did not like the way I looked. Bixie ushers you through the door and leads you down the way back the stairs. The stranger on your heels like a stubborn shadow. The red lotus is draped in a haze of pale smoke dotted with flickering candles and incense glowing like cinders in the night. The smell of burning opium is dark and rich, like a batch of floral biscuits with a sharp afterbite. The pale red glow from the Chinese lanterns paints the space in perpetual twilight. It's easy to lose track of time within these walls, while whiling away your days in a blissful waking dream. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is where I'm going to end. The Indie Spotlight is brought to you by Ants Online, America's premier technology and gaming retailer. Hit that subscribe button if you like these videos. We want to continue making more for you.